Hi, my tubies. Hi, my tubies. We are back. I'm using my uh, other camera on my phone. Like I said, while one is uploading, I have to use this so I can get this done in a timely fashion. Uh, yeah, so we're going back to uh, 2020 update and how Jehovah's Witnesses are still, still destroying families. If you look at part one, you see how I had a family that was pretty much close-knit. And because I woke up, the family unit is totally destroyed, totally destroyed. Anyway, here is part two, and you can listen up <clears throat> to see how this has affected so many other families, other families who it's not about alcohol, it's not about drugs, it's not about boundaries, it's not about any of that. It's about what this organization does to families. Mom and dad saw that they needed to be loyal just like Aaron. They loved me and wanted me to come back to Jehovah. I tried to contact them. I just wanted to talk and to hear their voice. I want you to notice this is a daughter who's calling her parents. Anything could be happening to that daughter out there. They see that as their daughter. But because she chose not to do things the uh, governing bodies way, the seven, you know, Caucasian men and one token black sitting up in a tower somewhere, she chose to see things differently, which if she was committing uh, fornication, that's definitely wrong. But you have people who have married the people that they committed fornication with. They're married now. But because they choose not to come back to this organization... Their parents still can't have anything to do with them for the rest of their life. They're not violating the Bible principles. She's married now. Let's just say you're married. You're going to church. You raised your kids to be God-fearing. And you raised your kids to follow Jesus' teachings. But because you choose not to go back to a very cult organization, you have lost your parents and what you thought. There are no friends in this organization. Trust me when I tell you. Please, Tubies, if you don't uh, believe anything I've ever told you, trust me, there are no friends in this organization. Let's listen further. I missed being with my family. Of course she does. And they thought about reaching out to me. But they knew that if they had associated with me, even a little, just to check on me, that small dose of association might have satisfied me. It could have made me think that there was no need to return to Jehovah. You see how they got the Jehovah, Jehovah. The organization is Jehovah. No, it's not. And you know what? I'm going to try to keep my cool here because that angers the hell out of me. The organization is not Jehovah. So you don't need... Bog down these apostates and be careful on the internet. Human apostates are mentally diseased and they try to infect others with their disloyal teaching. We both just studied and researched relentlessly night and day. It didn't stop. It was very obsessive. Um, and the more we learned, the more upsetting it became. And to the point where I was really, with all my might, hoping and praying and wishing that what I was learning was not true. And trying to feed myself the, it's just all a bunch of apostate lies. It's just a bunch of stories they manipulated, and it's bogus. And I'm going to wake up tomorrow and... It's like I'm going to have this, you know, awakening and realize, oh, this is a load of crap. And let's move on, continue with our lives. We need not look any further. Well, fortunately, I would wake up and that wasn't the case. It would slap me all in the face again and it wasn't going to go away. So the more we learned, the more we realized that we were living in a lie. We literally, by just doing some critical thinking uh, and research, um, had torn yeah. apart in, in a matter of weeks. And not even intentionally trying to do so, actually intentionally trying to do the opposite of proving our beliefs to in fact be true. 
Once you choose to, loo to leave the religion, you'll be left with no one. No one to talk to. And this is really sad because a lot of the Jehovah's Witnesses, they get caught up in the trap this way. And this is kind of how they keep you. I lost my mother, my sister, my grandmother, my grandfather, my aunts, cousins, everybody. They basically um, said, um, you know, you are free. You are free to leave any religion at any time. And I said, I must just stop you there. Sorry, right, stop lying. Uh, you're wrong. I am not free to leave this religion. If if it wasn't for the fact that I'm being shunned by my family, and I told them about just before I came, I had an email from my dad saying that he would be shunning me. I said if it wasn't for the fact that I was being shunned, you could say that it's, I'm free to leave this religion. But the truth is, the truth is that if I leave this religion, I am punished. There are ramifications visited on me through my family. My family is used as a weapon against me through right. shunning. Exactly. I, I've read so many, I, I'd say literally hundreds of stories of people who have either been close to suicide. I personally know of six that did commit suicide as a result of growing up as, as a Jada. Six people who have committed suicide, and if you do your research, like Jehovah said, uh, first John chapter four, uh, first Thessalonians, I believe it is chapter five. I always like to say chapters, read the whole chapter, please. So you don't take things out of context. Suicide after suicide after suicide where people couldn't handle the loss of their family. We also, I think we, uh, uh have heard the news of one, uh, Jehovah witness person who killed up her whole family, man, the hell with it. You know, it, it's ridiculous. And they know that it's ridiculous what they do because that's why they got up in the court of law. If you look at video uh, part one of this video, they lied outright in the courts under oath. Isn't that called perjury? Perjury. Okay? Because they know what they're doing is wrong. And that's the only way they could keep people trapped in this religion, this cult. My son and daughter could sit up here and try to play games or they want to try to act like they don't know this is a cult. Yes, they do. I raised my son and daughter to have common sense, at least be sensible. My son is stuck with it because he feels leaving it really is going to be leaving his sister behind. I'm not leaving my daughter behind. I've never turned my back on her. She knows her way to me. She knows my phone number. She knows my address. She knows where I work. She knows my email. She knows my track phone. She always have access to her mother. She won't have to be alone because I have a female, a women's Bible study group. She could probably lead it. It would be great. I also have a Bible study group that is not in a church. It's wonderful. So if my son and my daughter ever wanted to wake up or whatever, uh, <laughs> they know they always have support. It's not like I came out here. I'm, I was out here fighting alone, Tubies. I'm telling you, alone. And that's hard. I was out. I'm out here. I was before I found this um, a non-denominational group and this Bible study group. And that's still the same as fighting alone when you lost your family. It's still alone. Because a lot of the people in my Bible study group, they're married. They, you know, they have their families and they have support and all of that. So when I got out here, I, it, it's, it's hard. I went into a depression. I was drinking more than usual. I was, it hurt. I hadn't did laundry for months. For me to take a shower, that was a chore. I don't think I have to go into detail in terms of how debilitating depression can be. I cried every single day. Even when I talk about it now, I tear up. I get emotional because this is so wrong. But the thing that keeps me, uh, how you say, afloat is I keep my faith in Jehovah. Jeho leave it in Jehovah's hands. And Jehovah is amazing. He's wonderful because he's exposing them every day. It's coming. It's in the, the People magazine. Get that People magazine with uh, Kobe Bryant on the cover. Get that one. I think it's, uh, I forget, the, the it's February, whatever. Oh, man, it's, just get that People magazine. It's in there. It's on Oxygen. It's on A&E. A &E. It's on the news. It's all over the internet. It's on Facebook. It's on Instagram. It's on uh, chat, face chat or whatever. It's everywhere. 
Yahweh is good. Jesus, thank you. Because I kept my faith and so many others have kept their faith, Jehovah's handling it. He really is. You. Um, I hear the horror stories and it just breaks my heart. Me too. And to know that the organization victimizes these ones and says that they're the bad guy, you know, it just, it just blows me away. You know, the doubts that you have, it's normal to have doubts like that. Don't suppress them. You need to find out the truth for you. Can't shy away from uh, strictly observing what the scriptures tell us to do in these situations. And it's, it's literally as simple as that. Can you show me? This is uh, elders meeting, uh, a judicial committee meeting. I would love to show you another judicial committee meeting, the way they handled this female. She asked them before we go into this can we please pray so that we can have jehovah's spirit over this um <clears throat> you know jehovah's spirit it was three or four elders four men against this one woman you see that's bully they always want to have three or four people there why you have to be just this one why can't i bring two or three other people with me so we could all share these scriptures up in here we could all i don't want to argue because Jesus Christ was not about arguing, cursing and screaming and raising your voice and calling each other out of their name. No, we're going to sit here. We're going to have a sensible discussion. You may call it a debate. There's nothing wrong with debating as long as you keep it civil. But it's all about trying to find the truth. With this sister, they say we're not praying over this, 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 this meeting. I was like, but then I noticed how when they're with men. They don't have no problem praying, praying with the men. That's crazy. But anyway, let's get back to the point. Uh, this is a judicial meeting that this, this uh, uh, I don't even like to call him a brother, but this uh, wonderful man who woke up. Here we go. Scripture that says that if someone voluntarily changes their belief, that their friends and family should avoid speaking to them altogether. Okay, well, we're not going to get, I'll be honest with you, we're not here to debate the scriptures. Oh, look, look. You're, you're parents, even if you weren't to fellowship tonight. We're, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we're not here to debate. Jesus Christ said you're always supposed to be prepared to make a statement and to stand up for your beliefs. You're always supposed to be prepared for that. They're not, they don't want to do this because they know they're wrong. They're wrong. Your parents would, I'm telling you right now, your parents are probably going to hold off association with you anyway for the protection of their own spirituality. You're about to make a decision about whether or not my parents are allowed to speak to me. Do you understand that? Our decision will be about your choices, what you have chosen to do. That's what our decision is based on. But you don't recognize that your decision is going to effectively be an order to all Jehovah's Witnesses, including my parents, about whether or not they're allowed to speak to me. We don't take this lightly. I should hope not. But the ball is in your court. The ball is in your court. You stay stuck in this group. Don't you leave us. Because if you leave us, we're going to destroy you. We're going to do everything in our power to destroy you. How dare you not bow down to the tower? How dare you not want to sit here and worship the seven Caucasian men and that one token black? How dare you? Now bow down. And this man and all the rest of us, we're Shatrach, Meshach, and Abednego, sweetheart. I will not bow down. And do you think it's reasonable to offer me those two alternatives? To either believe what I'm told to believe or accept being cut off from friends and family. Does that seem like a reasonable choice to you? Does that seem to you like something that the scriptures explicitly require? We respect the faithful slave's direction on understanding God's word. We... The faithful and discreet slave class, we respect their direction. Their direction would never have had you make like four or five different false prophecies. The Bible clearly shows you how to identify false prophets. God, I don't know what I was thinking and I wasn't even focused on even that. That's because I only thought they had made one false prophecy, which was 1975. You know, stay alive until 1975. That's their literature, everything they was promoting. Because that was when the end was coming. Okay, but little did I know, they made how many false prophecies? I was like, really? The Bible clearly shows you how to identify false prophets. 
So you're not the faithful and discreet slave class that the Bible is speaking of. Not at all. Every time you look up, they're flip flopping back and forth with their teachings. They've killed thousands upon thousands, more than all the cults put together. This organization has killed more than all of them put together with their blood issues, with the suicides. I mean, <laughs> and my son is going to try to convince me that he don't understand. My son is brilliant. He ain't no fool. My daughter, she can be dense, very dense at times. But even she, she knows this is a cult. My daughter knows. She's just hanging out with it because it's convenient for her. She's selfish. She always has been. And she doesn't care about how many other lives that she's ru that's being ruined or damaged. You're knocking at doors to come to destroy people's families, to destroy lives. You want to talk about, well, we help this. You help nothing. You do more damage than help. But when you're selfish and you have a heart that is not pure and you don't have an honest heart, of course you could stay connected with this organization. I, I think they're evil. A lot of people say, no, they're just believing. There's too much information out here now. There's too much. It's everywhere. It's on the news. They're not permitted from look, looking at the news. It's everywhere. How these Jehovah's Witnesses are being sued, one lawsuit after another, and people are winning when it comes to the molestation. It's the pedophile's paradise. How can you still sit here blindly and pretend like this is God's organization? God's organization is uh, it's a, the, the church of Christ. And what does the church of Christ consist of? Anybody who is following Jesus Christ's teachings. That's what we all have in common. That's it. So like I said, I like non-denominational. Because I'm not sitting up here trying to get involved in no other cult, Scientology, Mormon, Catholic, uh, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, all of this nonsense. Let me tell you one thing that I've learned when it comes to all of these cults, they all know that information is the enemy of the cults. That's why they don't want you to look into no other books, no other books, just read our literature, just listen to our stuff, because they know information is going to expose them. I'm going to go in further detail on that one too. I'm going to make a video about that. We love to call them. So do we. we love as so do we. And we recognize the faithful slave coming body. No, you don't recognize. Oh, well, sit up there and tell me. you. I, I had to come on. I know I'm arguing. Ooh, it's just burning me up. And we love Jehovah. No, you don't. You love the governing body. And we love Jesus. No, you don't. You love the organization. And we have come to, uh, we know the governor, the discreet slave. Obviously, you blind as a bat. <laughs> they don't want to have no, no meeting with me. And let me tell you, if I went to, to, to a judicial committee, I'm coming with three other people because, yeah, I'm coming with my pastor. I'm coming with my minister. And no, we're not going to have no kind of meeting where you can sit up here and try to bully me. You have three or four men attacking one person. And the reason they do that is because they know they can't stand on their own. Come on, let's make it fair here. You think they'll ever do that? That ain't happening. What you all want us to do. We wish that you would see it the way you did before, but we reap what we sow. If this is what you want to sow, then just like us, we have to reap what we sow. Oh, so whatever. It's your decision. Wake up, idiot. This isn't a personal thing that we're trying to. Be, because we're mad or anything. Oh, no. I, I you're, you're, under well. you're under direction. You're under direction. Right. You know, it's, it's under Jehovah's direction, really, you know, based on what the scriptures tell you, us. Right? You have your opinion on that. Yes. Right. Yes, you do. Okay. And, and that's it because we want to protect the sheep also. And I love that what he said. You have your opinion. Now, they summoned this person into this meeting because they were found celebrating holidays. Okay, so you didn't approve of it and you don't see it that way. But like I, like he said, it's an opinion, dude. Because you can't back none of that up with the Bible. No scriptures. And that pagan origin from paganism, you need to kill that noise. With all the things that you follow that has origins from pagans. With the way, with this whole organization <laughs> was based on paganism. 
Do your research, Russell Light. Do your research. I mean, type of thing. That's why we are not. That's why that's we have why we no friends. Ourselves. We we're. <laughs> And I understand, but, but you're up. not, we don't want you taking away Dan's parents and my mother. And that. But, but we're not taking them away. Your actions are taking them no. away. No, that's not true. But, you know, that, that's what it boils down to. Is no, it's not. So I guess. We... Do you see how stupid they are? And I try my best not to be rude, but this is, your actions is what's taking it away. It's not us doing it. Your actions, you refuse to bow down to the tower. And because you refuse to worship the seven men or eight men sit up in the tower, you're the reason why your family's not going to talk to you. Okay? Because they're already conformed. They already turned their back on Jehovah and Jesus Christ. And now you need to do the same. Now bow down or lose your family. They are so destroyed. You see, your parents have not disowned you. Your parents are hoping that that hopefully someday you'll bow down you, too. You you Yeah, your parents and your family are hoping that someday you'll be just as weak and just as stupid and just as stuck on stupid as they are. Misery loves company. Please don't let me be a dumb ASS out here all by myself. Come and bow down too, please. <laughs> Come back to Jehovah. You see, you, you, you have decided to go down a path that they don't like. Mm -hmm. And so they are hoping that by not condoning what you're doing, that you may Come somewhere down that, down that yeah. path. All of a sudden, just just like this has hit you, and, and really, Isaac, I'm looking at you today, and you say that this stuff that you have been reading hasn't done that much to you. This, you are an un, unhappy person. I can see it written all over you. Yep. You are destroyed. You, and if you are not careful, my brother, look how stupid you're gonna you're gonna end up. <laughs> you know, your your mind is gonna is, is gonna explode. Oh, I already passed that point. Cult. It's a cult. Yep. They destroy families. That's what they do, Tubies. You have it here. You've seen it with your own two eyes. How this organization just will come and tear your family to shreds. It's unbelievable. Now this picture here is a picture of my son and my daughter. And you see we are at an assembly. As long as you're being a part of this cult, my daughter is willing to go along with it. But as the moment you wake up and you no longer, you see the lies for what it is. She's ready to throw you by the wayside. Okay. Uh, my son, he has done the fade. He likes to say he hasn't, whatever. But he don't go to none of the meetings. He don't attend any of these. He goes to the assembly every now and again. He doesn't even want to have anything to do with these people. Not really. And because of that, him and his sister are no longer close. They are so distant. She's cold to him. She was ready to throw him to the gutter. You know, if he wasn't willing to go out there knocking at doors or what have you. You know, people do wake up. Like I say, my son, yeah, he, he he knows this is a cult. But the only reason why he's still hanging on somewhat and hasn't totally, completely disassociated himself from it is because he feels that leaving this cult would be leaving his sister. So he's trying to hang in there, trying to say he identifies with it still because that's him hanging on to his sister. Because my son is very... He's brilliant. He knows this is a cult. He sits around and try to argue issues and try to whatever. But deep down inside, if he felt so uh, good about this organization, why doesn't he want to be a part of it? Well, let's keep it real. Like I said, here's another picture of me and my son. We're just hanging out. We went out to dinner. We was going out to a movie. 
and we did lots and lots of uh things together you know we was just such a oh just, that was my best friend that is i still say he is my best friend he has some um growing up to do uh but he's i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm how you say i have faith enough that he will definitely come now. around. He, he, he has some uh, self-searching to do, you know, because that's one thing about this organization. When you are a Jehovah's Witness, which I'm going to share uh, something with you, you don't really know who you are. So it, it's, that's going to take a minute. Now, here is another picture of my son and my daughter. They're tight. They're close. As long as he's down with the cult... Or down with knocking at doors, going to recruit, whatever, all is well. But is that really genuine love? Like I say, my son is is saying a part of this. I believe I'm guessing that this whatever, uh, him saying that this is the truth. If you feel that it's the truth, let's sit down, and you bring your information to the table while I bring my information, or you bring your people and I bring my people, and let's just sit down and work through this. <clears throat> but he. Is hanging on to this because he wants to hang on to his sister. He loves her more than she loves him. She got a man in her life, a dude. So that he, he's like, yeah, whatever. He plays second fiddle. She doesn't uh, value him as much as he values her. She never has. What used to be a happy family, my son is not here because he's taking the picture. What used to be a happy family is no longer a happy family. So I'm going to pause on that note, Tubies. I just wanted to replay that again with the pictures connected. What once was a happy family is no longer a happy family thanks to this cult. We can never remedy it. Because normally if there's problems with a family, you go into family counseling. Everyone in the family shows up at the counseling. You work to save. You fight like a dog to save your family. Family is the foundation of society. I mean, really. So, of course, we know who, who hates family more than anything, and that's Satan the devil. Satan the devil works day and night, morning, noon, night, every, every waking eye to destroy the family unit. Because he knows that that is definitely the fabric of society. You know, when you divide your family, it's easier for him to conquer you individually. Divide and conquer. My daughter started this mess. She started this nonsense. But anyway, please be wise and be careful with your family. And uh, remember that information is the enemy of any cult that's out there. I'm going to do something brief on that, too, to try to help inform you a little more in terms of how to protect your family members before they get themselves caught up. This is Sheila True Love, truly loving you. And until next time, we'll talk again. I'll see you on the other side. You always have a choice. Choose wisely. And please don't forget to share and to press the like button if you like it. And please share this because you don't know how many lives you are helping to save. Until next time, bye for now.